simply extraordinary. Challenging. Adventure, beautiful landscape. The scenery is amazing. I, I get goosebumps just walking around here. And I have been here for 20 years. Cold, hungry, awesome. Hunting back to basics. When you're so hungry and a little angry, you just end up being hangry. Sometimes it goes extreme. I don't think people really do this sort of thing a lot. People have gotten used to the comfort of, you know, bringing sleeping bags and food and all the things that we take for granted. There are people that hunt in the wilderness. The first thing they take with them is a tent and a sleeping bag to increase their comfort. Probably the, the next thing they'll take with them is some food. So we thought straight up we're going to take those out of the equation so that it makes the hunting not something that's recreational or enjoyable, but it's something that becomes a necessity and it takes those people absolutely back to a more primal state. Even now I think it's hard to describe because I think I, have, I need a, a, a bit of time of, on my own to really suck it in and to kind of work with all the emotions and what impressions. <laughs> it's a big boy. Let's go and see. I had a vision to take a group of people um, to the extreme, taking people outside of their normal comfort zone in a hunting environment, um, pushing them psychologically, pushing them physiologically to as far as they could go and still succeed in a challenge. We had the opportunity to uh, pull together what I think is you know, a pretty unique and, and first of a kind uh, experience for six of the world's top journalists. We gave them very little information. The idea was that they just met us in Stockholm airport. Um, we'd booked onward flights somewhere else. They had no idea where they were going. I saw all the equipment and, and bags that Simon has. So you know it's going to be an adventure, and especially then when you have a, a British um, military guy who is there only to keep you alive, you know it's going to be um, adventurous. The absolute priority from my, my side of the ship as far as survival, as far as safety went, it was we had to establish a camp that was going to be good enough to get everyone through the night. By the time it went dark, we had to have somewhere safe to stay the night, with sufficient firewood, with all the resources that we needed to get us through the night. I knew at one point that I would be out there for three or four days without having practically anything of my own with me. And that was a bit frightening, I think, but all the gear we, we, we brought with us uh, passed the test and, and, and it, it didn't play a huge role. And when, when things play, when gear play a role in nature, and like we tested it here, it's because something is wrong. Let's face it, the clothing was going to be the most important element because we didn't have a sleeping bag or a tent. It was key to making sure people didn't go hypothermic. Um, we actually thought we'd throw a few small curveballs and as far as some prototype gear that we'd just produced, this would be a fantastic event to, uh, to actually field test it. And suffice to say, really happy with the results. All the guys love the new gear, so it was great from our perspective. You know, we needed a firearm that was going to be able to operate in cold and wet and miserable conditions. And the M12 Extreme was an excellent choice for that and performed brilliantly in this environment. The Leica Magnus scope, again, that is a scope very, very robust, all metal parts. Um, you know, there was no question in my mind that that was the right piece of equipment to bring along. The new Magnus Eye was what we used. Yeah, we had different ends of the spectrum here for ammo and uh, obviously on the on the bird, I mean it's a big bird, Capra Cayley. We plan to shoot those with 308 and in particular we got some, some ammunition that's loaded with 150 grain full metal jacket so that's basically going to go in and out without causing too much damage. On the whole other end with the moose, um, you know you, you need a tough bullet, you want something that's going to penetrate well but still open up, create damage. We went with the custom international line of ammunition, um, the 180 grain spire point. The spire point's a tried and true bullet. It's been used for decades. The experience was how far can you go? Can you sleep um, without a sleeping bag, without a tent in the night? 
in, in this wilderness when uh, the temperature is going under zero degrees. And um, yeah, we can. Can you uh, stay there uh, without eating for one or two days? Yes, we could. I know by experience that this is a tough event just to walk in 15 kilometers, no food during a day, and I know how I react without food. You see the, the, the rock face, and you can see that on the, uh, the map where the brown lines are closest together, that's showing how steep it is, their contour lines. So that's that. So that tells us right we're pretty then much below. When we established the camp, then after that we started to hunt really hard. We, we don't hunt with dogs, except for the birds, but the moose hunting is only by stalking and calling and we cover lots of land. There are big vast wilderness here and close to the, the point that is most wilderness in all of Europe. So no roads here, just the legs to walk with. But when it came down to it, seriously, it was it was tough. As a matter of fact, um, you know, a few times you're looking at your legs and going, come on legs, give me more and sometimes the, the more didn't come. Yeah, it was, it was tough. It was absolutely tough. You know, we were sleeping in minus six to minus eight degrees without any food and, you know, with very limited equipment, really. Um, you know, it's no surprise that everybody's bodies felt it. I mean, it was a bit of a pressure when we went on in the morning to hunt the moose. First, we heard one shot and then second, and boom, and we thought we could actually hear the impact at one point, but it of course it could have been something else, but it, it sounded exactly like it should. And it was just this relaxed feeling that now we finally had something we could put in the mouth and yeah, that, that, that the feast that we would, we would have. And also a feeling that even though we were on the other side of the lake, we were, it was a team effort. So, so we were hunting as well as they were. And um, maybe they got one, maybe we got one. We, we didn't know. I was just glad. I was um, thinking of the team and um, it's a team experience and we were all hungry and I just came back and saw these smiling faces because we brought food and that was truly the best feeling on this trip. We had the most awesome day and we were calling and tracking and walking and, and, um, and it all ended up in this magnificent place of all places. Tommy and I was, were on our feet, and he just said, there, this huge moose bull was just standing at, looking at us at 50 meters, turning towards Tommy and say, said, shoot, and then it just fired. The moment I shot the first time, I was, it was kind of, almost instinctive. In this, in this scenario with us being here, second day, haven't had anything to eat for 36 hours. It's, uh, it's a crazy experience. What happened? <laughs> it's a big boy. Let's go and see. I hope people can, can look at this and be inspired spark their imagination to want to go and engage with the wilderness and have an adventure. It doesn't have to be all about the hunt, it's an element of the adventure, but to go and engage in a more basic way, perhaps with a bit less equipment, maybe testing yourself and challenging yourself in an environment, a proper wilderness environment. If you can go and engage on that level and a few people want to do that after they see this, then you know I'll be really, really happy.